Folge 42, Dr. Jeffrey Gerber und Ivor Cummins im Interview. Evolution Radio Show, dein Programm für evolutionäre Gesundheit, Training und höchste Performance. In dieser Folge haben wir das Doktor und Ingenieur Duo Ivor Cummins und Dr. Jeffrey Gerber zu Gast. Ivor Cummins ist auch bekannt als The Fat Emperor, er ist Ingenieur im Bereich Biochemie und Dr. Jeffrey Gerber ist bekannt als The Denver Diet Doctor. Er ist Allgemeinmediziner aus Denver, Colorado und er arbeitet seit 15 Jahren mit Low Carb. Seine Spezialisierung ist Herz-Kreislauf-Erkrankungen und Diabetes. Dr. Jeffrey Gerber und Ivor Cummins haben beide das Interesse daran, das Problem chronischer Erkrankungen an der Wurzel zu packen. Und das hat sie zusammengebracht. Sie erzählen über das wahnsinnig interessante Interview mit dem 95-jährigen Dr. Kraft und was er bereits vor 30 Jahren über Diabetes, Blutzucker und Insulin wusste. Wir sprechen über zu viel Insulin bei Diabetikern und das Problem von Unterzucker, warum Insulin viel zu früh verschrieben wird und auf welche moderne Nahrungsmittel du verzichten solltest, um gesund zu bleiben. Wenn du dieses Interview auf YouTube anschaust, siehst du die deutschen und englischen Untertitel. Im Audio-Podcast hörst du das englische Original. Uh, Leo, thanks for having Ivor and I here, and Julia is our photographer. <laughs> and so my name is Jeff Gerber. I'm a, f a family doctor, a, a GP from Denver, Colorado. And uh, we're all here at the Health Unplugged in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had asked Ivor and I to do an interview. And uh, people see, my, see us together a lot. And why don't yeah. you first introduce yourself okay. and uh, tell them who you are. So I'm Ivor Cummins, I'm not a doctor, I'm a, a chemical engineer, biochemical originally, and I work as an R&D manager in high volume manufacturing. So as a kind of a technical problem solving type, I guess, in engineering. But I did get into medical stuff when I had some less than favorable blood test results a couple of years ago. And I didn't have satisfaction from the doctors I had access to, so I researched myself. And then I discovered a lot of stuff. <laughs> And met Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just you know crazy. We're like the uh, the doctor and engineering duo, and <laughs> I would describe Ivor as the engineering version of me, and you know he's the uh, I'm the doctor version of him. Basically. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and so. uh, you know the common interest is looking for the root cause of co chronic disease, specifically mm. obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. And uh, initially, we had both independently. Per prepared some presentations about yeah. the identical topics, <laughs> yeah. insulin, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, and we found each other online. Mm. And uh, yeah, we we're just passionate about this. Exactly, yeah. yeah and we so, come at it from different perspectives, mm. yeah. And I think yours was cholesterol, OMG, or oh my God, and you were from a, a doctor's perspective explaining how the cholesterol thing isn't what people generally believe and that insulin and blood sugar metrics are actually far more important and I had done the cholesterol conundrum from an engineering perspective explaining the same thing in some detail so yeah. um, I think you suspected for many many years that insulin was more important in cardiovascular disease really than cholesterol uh, and I was more recent yeah so um, you know my story goes back 15 years mm. so i kind of been doing it a long time but then ivor came along uh, just a couple years ago and i'd listened to his uh, cholesterol conundrum and i just you know i fell off my chair i'm like whoa this is so spot on so we did uh we ended up first doing a skype session mm. and you had said to your wife who is this doctor and crazy American pursuing yeah. me across the yeah. internet and I'm saying let's collaborate and he's like <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> so we went on to do quite a lot of stuff we went to South Africa for the first a low carb summit world first mm. and uh, that was hugely yeah. successful and we got to meet all the people there Jeff you got to speak at it uh, and we've gone on to do other projects perhaps interesting is a recent one where we went to Chicago and we met with mm. the 95 year old dr. Joseph Kraft and um, we had found his book, read it, it's incredible, and he had discovered over 30 years ago that diabetes was much, much bigger in the world than was suspected. Um, but you need to do his test, which is to take glucose 
and measure insulin over many hours and that truly identifies people with diabetes and possibly now in America we suspect over 50% of Americans are essentially diabetic um, and Dr. Kraft's proposal was that all cardiovascular disease is essentially diabetes um, but the problem is we underdiagnose diabetes massively. Yeah, so. and so again, I knew this before I met Ivor. Yeah. I knew this before I met Dr. Kraft. But all these things that have happened in recent years just really reaffirms the things that we were thinking about mm. so long ago. And, you know, um, a take home message for your viewers is that um, insulin and uh, hyperinsulinemia. Uh, are massive issues, as Ivor said, and um, I've realized that a long time ago. And we do screening, uh, unlike uh, most of the GPs in our in our country. We're very proactive, looking for uh, these types of uh, conditions. And uh, if you can, you know, get yourself checked back back at home, where where you guys come from, uh, to be alert. Uh, it's not necessarily. Uh, the cholesterol, but more about uh, metabolism, metabolic issues such as insulin that you really need to be addressing if you want to address cardiovascular risk. Mm. Maybe, uh, so this brings up a question to me now, um, especially about um, diabetics, um, type 2 diabetics who do insulin, uh, even low dose, and the impression I get talking to them, talking to, to doctors around, is uh, they are really afraid of um, for, uh, for them, the blood sugar crashing. So all the doctors seem to subscribe more insulin mm -hmm. uh, than they need. Um, do you know where, where that actually comes from, that this, this constant fear that people get so low in blood sugar? Is that, is that real or is that just made up um, uh, in, in classical medicine? Ah, uh, yeah. That, well, first of all, uh, insulin is being prescribed way too soon. That's the biggest problem. And uh, you can get low blood sugar from getting too much insulin. But uh, uh, traditionally, we're trained to address diabetes as a problem of blood sugar. And the problem is really that the blood sugar is the effect, mm -hmm. not the cause. And I'm sure you guys are aware of this. And so when you start thinking about root cause and addressing the problems with insul hyperinsulinism, insulin resistance, the message is that you address that with food, with whole foods, you know, reducing processed foods, and that often is, uh, number one, the sugar and uh, the grains, the flour, the vegetable oils are very much inflammatory. So you start eliminating those foods and you don't need insulin. So, you know, pumping insulin into people just makes them gain weight. But we see that the doctors yeah. are afraid of, of actually getting people off insulin again. I, yeah, that's, that's so what I see. They're worried about hypoglycemic episodes, but then yeah. unfortunately in our world, um, due to mistakes made many decades ago, they promote high carbohydrate diets for, for diabetics, and that drives further insulin and requires more insulin to be taken in injection, which can then lead to driving the blood sugar too low. So if people back off on the carbohydrate and the foods that Jeff mentioned, uh, and they, be, they encourage a fat burning type of metabolism, then they, they won't have as much hypoglycemic episodes. You know, that's generally, if by reducing the carbohydrate and going to a higher fat diet, they'll have a more stable metabolism, they won't require the insulin nearly so much, uh, and they can avoid these kind of crashes of blood sugar following, you know, taking sugary carbohydrate meals two to three hours later, you can get very lows. And the more carbohydrates you put into a type two diabetic, the more insulin you need, and it becomes like a, an unstable engineering system. It, it's impossible to control properly. And that lack of control leads to the hypoglycemic episodes. Yeah. The trick is take away the fundamental problem, which is the excessive carbohydrate, and then you can get stability. So yeah. Ivor talks like an engineer. <laughs> Doctors wish they were engineers. Sometimes they, they think they are engineers, but they're so wrong. And so 
you know, this is what is so beautiful with Ivor's uh, approach, you know, problem solving. And why don't you describe, you know, the three legs of the stool method oh. of problem solving and well, causality. It's this a, is beautiful. It's a simplified version. Uh, yeah. We use a more complex version in, in real life. But basically, a lot of the trials we hear about and a lot of the so-called evidence is based on the first leg of, of proving a cause, and that's associational evidence. So, you know, you look at people over 20 years, you monitor what they eat, you find out whether they get disease or not, and then you can link together what they ate with the disease, but it doesn't prove cause, it's just association. So that's the first leg of the root cause stool. It's very weak. The second is the mechanistic understanding, the mechanisms. So for any proposed uh, cause, it has to make sense through all the biology and science. And that's where they've been quite weak, actually. Mm. And the third is the experimental proof, where you actually switch on a proposed cause and you create the problem, switch it on and off. And that's the third experimental or the randomized control trial. But you really need all three legs of the stool to have a, a solid cause. Um, but a vast amount of our current medical beliefs are based on just one leg, the associational. You know, like the Ansel Keys in the 60s, he saw that fat associated with heart disease. That, that's worthless proof to an engineer, but it seems to be good enough for our, our whole medical profession. Sometimes it seems. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was all based not on. Not new, yeah. Jeff, or yeah, any, I mean, any doctor at this yeah, conference, but certainly tradi not. Traditionally, you know, mm. that, that's where it all came from, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff, Ivo, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having the time for Evolution Radio Show. All right. Delighted, Leo, Julia. Thanks very <laughs> Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.